So we're just here at the entrance to Cossa. This is an incredible site. This is one of the classic polygonal wall sites, probably built by the um, Pelasgians or the Titans. And you, we've had a quick look around already, but we're going to have a more detailed look at this particular wall. This is the best preserved wall at the main entrance here. There are three entrances, had a kind of strange, almost like an arrowhead sort of heart type shape the entire place. But what they have in three different places around the edge are these sort of like square polygonal rooms, which were like, you know, I'm not sure exactly what they were for, but they were potentially to like, you know, to watch people coming in and so forth. Um, but let's just have a quick look at this entrance here because look, you can just see behind me, we've got amazing polygonal architecture all around this particular site and going all the way up the hill behind me. So this is the main current entrance to the site. Already we can see massive polygonal blocks forming this outer wall of this huge Cossa um, site here. It goes all the way up there and it's about two and a half kilometers one and a half or so miles of this wall all the way around the edge and there's patches of it inside there as well. So this is an incredible construction, much like the other sites we've seen south of Rome, um, just south of uh, Tarquinia and up here, which is much further north and Saturnia, which is about this latitude but inland. There's so much going on in this area. And this isn't built by the Romans. This is a much earlier megalithic culture of unknown origin. Even the, the Pelasgians or the Titans or whatever you want to call them, no one really knows who they are or exactly where they came from. Let's count the sides. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You've got seven sided stone here in the wall of Cossa, just inside the entrance. There's other ones that we've counted with 10 sides. And this is just, it gets more and more crazy the more you look at the quality of craftsmanship of these walls. Now this has been badly damaged. It's been weathered. It's had earthquakes happen in this whole area. It's an earthquake rich zone up here in Tuscany. Also south of Rome as well. And you just have to, you know, have to question why they would use this particular style. It's so difficult to do. This would have been finely put together with no mortar. Very amazing. Then we have these little, we find a lot of these, these little triangles of stone, just filling in the gaps perfectly. Absolutely amazing. It's just such a treat to be here at Cossa. It's just an incredible sight. This is all the Roman construction inside with the museum and so forth, but it's absolutely incredible. This is the Northwest Gate. This is what kind of what we're looking at here, what we've just been looking in detail at some of the stones. Um, it's called Porta Fiorentina. It's the biggest of the three openings in the city walls, and it's now the main entrance to the site. It exhibits a so-called propylon, a double closing system made up of two connected rooms. And you can see those here, one on this side and one on that side. Again, the problem is it doesn't look like cyclopean or polygonal construction, like a later construction. So you can clearly see the difference in the walls here. You can see the, probably the Roman wall there, right next to it is the Pelasgian megalithic structure. JJ just spotted what looks like tool marks. So we're gonna go and take a quick look at those. See if they're original or whether they were done by the Romans. Inside are the little, um, it looks like drill marks, the so precision cut inside it's, you have to get really close. And they're like the ones we find in Egypt. They're really finely done. The Fiorentina Gate, the one behind us here, is one of three main entrances to the site. This is the northwest entrance, which is interesting because that's the summer solstice sunset alignment. 
And also, there's 18 of these kind of rooms that we find. We've got a couple here, but there's all the way around the edge, there's like these megalithic polygonal square rooms that had ramps going into them. What exactly they were used for, we don't know, but most likely defense. Apparently, it was founded in 273 BC. It's about 114 meters above sea level, and it's located southeast of the Argentario Promontory. And it was during Augustus's reign, the geographer Strabo describes it as follows. After Populonia, there is Cossa, a town situated slightly above the sea. Overlooking the bay, there is a hill on which the city is located. Port Hercules lies in front of it. And next there is a lagoon. The migration of tuna fish can be observed from, prom from the promontory over the bay. And despite being favored by nature, there was ex ex extreme occupation here going way, way back into the past before the Romans came. The name Cossa could come from the Etruscan name, uh, Cusi or Cusia, and eventually the Romans came here like 300 or so BC. Nearby, the Etruscan settlement of Orbitello um, is related to this, and that also has these polygonal walls. And it was during the third century BC uh, that Rome founded the colony of Cossa over territory confiscated from Vulci nine years before the First Punic War, 264 to 241 BC. So hopefully this will give you some sense of scale of some of the stones in this wall here just by me walking up here and you can just see it's a remarkable feat of construction. Let me just look at the shapes of some of the stones here. This one's very intriguing. One, two, three, four, five, six sides. Very, very intriguing. The one above it, very strange. And it just continues. It gets weirder and weirder. It's almost like there's some kind of message or code within this particular wall. that have fallen off the top they just packed along the side here just along where you walk and so many I mean this is like 20 30,000 pieces of stone each weighing several tons probably up to 30 tons some of them each just walked from all the way down there go around two or three corners and it still continues. So it does go on for like, what, nearly two miles of this certain type of cyclopean polygonal wall. Hugely impressive feat. But let's go, let's continue walking, see what we can see around the edge here. You see just here, this is where it turns a corner. One of the few corners going around this amazing polygonal wall here at Cossa. Would that have been one stone with that shape or two stones, do you think? Either way, if you look above it, there are some very odd shaped stones throughout this incredible polygonal wall. They didn't really give up, they just kept going. They didn't stop the quality and the magnificence. And here we have one of the sort of towers around the edge, but look, some of these are not of the polygonal style. These are clearly Roman or later constructions, whereas the polygonal wall in its, whole, in its magnificence continues. So these round sort of rooms aren't necessarily the same as the Pulaskian polygonal wall builders. And here we have one of the other entrances. I've walked probably about a kilometer around the edge. Oh, that is impressive. Wow, 
Look at this, crikey. So this is the Porta Romano, the northeast gate here at Cossa, with the northwest gate we saw already. But this northeast gate is very, very impressive. And it's quite, quite famous. This is the one that Gary showed a photograph of in his lecture, Gary Billcliffe. And the round tower is clearly later. Although these entrances are obviously very, very ancient, part the Pelasgian or the Titans, the giants who built this site. My goodness, this is what we saw at, Sat at Saturnia. Look, we have cart ruts within the solid rock. You can see this. This is incredible. Two cart ruts, look, going along here. See that? See that little cut in the ground? Cut in the stone? We have a similar one on the other side, but let's just follow this one. This one's clearer. And it goes all the way up here. See, we have evidence of cart ruts carved into solid rock, like polygonal pavement. So we saw one cart rut going up there. It kind of goes under the mud now. But look, if we look over this side, you can see like dips in the rock. This is very interesting. So let's just see if we can find the one on this side. I mean, look at that. That is a cart rut. Look, the cart ruts continue up here. It's a very deep one there, look. Then we have more shallow ones, like three of them even here. Massive polygonal blocks. We have a polygonal pathway with cart ruts going up it. This is insane. This just gets more impressive the more you look around. So we've just come to the opposite side of Cossa. You can see here, there's a wall there. It's really hard to get to. All down here is broken polygonal blocks. The whole place is obviously surrounded. See, these are huge megalithic blocks. Look at these. So we're on the opposite side to the main entrance, standing on like a cornering area where, that's absolutely amazing. It seems like the Pelasgian builders, the megalith builders here, were warriors. They were seafarers. They were the giants or the titans of tradition. And they would have been defending their territory here next to the sea because this is the, being able to have access to the coast was important to them because they were a seafaring culture. But also we do find their kind of megalithic forts very far inland, like at Saturnia, south of Rome, like at Latri and so forth. And so they really spread around the entire country. They're also connected very clearly with Greece, Crete, and even Turkey, with sites like Elagia Hoyak. Um, so we have to kind of take this seriously, that this was a vast, unknown, seafaring, megalithic culture going back into Neolithic times. So it can't really be the Phoenicians, they're a bit too late. This is like the pre-Phoenician culture here in the Mediterranean and going out into, uh, out into the Atlantic through the Pillars of Hercules. So therefore we have to question, did they even go over to the Americas and influence the polygonal building there? Like in Peru, Bolivia, some aspects of it in other countries as well. It's really an important question we need to be asking about the builders of these polygonal wall sites here in Italy.